But in the late 1950s, a physicist named Leonard Schiff began searching for a way to test Einstein's ideas about space much closer to home. Schiff was inspired by something we usually think of as a child's toy, a gyroscope. He thought that if space really twists, like a fabric, the gyroscope might allow him to detect it. It was a strange idea, and he chose a strange place to share it with the world. The faculty swimming pool at Stanford. Here, in 1959, Schiff met with two colleagues, William Fairbank and Bob Cannon. He was excited about an ad he'd seen for a high-tech gyroscope. Though it looked different, it basically worked the same as the child's toy. Then and there, the three decided to launch a device like this into orbit around the Earth. Normally, a gyroscope's axis points in a fixed direction. But if Earth is actually dragging space, then the gyroscope's axis would be dragged along with it, shifting its orientation in a way that could be measured. It was a brilliantly simple plan. There was just one problem. Einstein's theories predict that the Earth's rotation twists space by only a tiny amount. An amount so small, it would be like trying to measure the height of a penny from 62 miles away. The team spent more than two years trying to figure out how to make such a precise measurement. They finally devised a plan to attach four freely floating gyroscopes to a telescope aimed at a distant star. If space twists, then over time, the gyroscopes would no longer point at the star since they'd get caught up in the swirl of space. And in 1962, they applied to NASA for a grant, requesting around a million dollars for what would come to be called Gravity Probe B. Members of the team originally thought the project would take about three years. They were just a little optimistic. With an ever-growing team, Gravity Pro B became one of the longest-running experiments in history. Decade after decade was spent trying to realize the original vision, which meant launching a telescope into space and building gyroscopes that were among the smoothest objects ever created. The technology is just frightening. It was like the carrot on the front of the mule. It was like it was always five to ten years away when we could do this. And it was five to ten years away for about 35 years. Consuming more than four decades and $750 million, the project was nearly canceled by NASA nine times. Ten, nine, Finally, eight, in April of 2004, the team gathered to witness the launch. Of the three men who sat by the pool back in 1959, only one was alive to see it. And there we were, watching. <laughs> it's a terribly exciting moment in your life. Just a thrilling experience. It was flawless. 10,000 things did not go wrong. <laughs> For over a year, Gravity Probe B orbited the Earth while the team nervously monitored its every move, trying to see if the Earth would actually twist space. Finally, the data began to trickle in, and there was a problem. The gyroscopes were experiencing a tiny, unexpected wobble, and to clean up the data would cost millions. With funds running out, it looked like nearly half a century of work was about to go down the drain. Then, at almost the last possible moment, two sources of additional funding emerged. The son of original team leader William Fairbank, who made a private donation, and Turkey al Saad, a member of the Saudi royal family with a degree in aeronautics from Stanford, who arranged for a large grant. Over the next two years, the problem with the data was solved, revealing that the axes of the gyroscope shifted by almost exactly the amount predicted by Einstein's equations. 
I think it's the first time that you can actually see Einstein's effect, his drift, with the naked eye. This experiment provides the most direct evidence ever found that space is something real, a physical entity like a fabric. After all, if space were nothing, there would be nothing to twist.